Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in our Ultimate Base 3.0. In the previous episode we finally did the Sleet Wheat Farm. I made a couple of changes, most noteworthy this little blob of naphtha in order to keep the chill a little bit at bay. We were losing a lot of chill through this hole and the naphtha kind of prevents it from happening. It is clearly visible here and now we're almost done cooling this down sufficiently. I also had to add another thermal regulator, so we're gonna need two in order to keep this farm at bay. Especially during the harvesting season, it tends to get a little bit higher in temperatures. There has been another suggestion in terms of lighting, something else that we could do. So instead of having a plant below this auto sweeper and a plant below this, we can have a floor lamp and that is gonna provide enough light for four farm tiles on either side. This means we will be able to get rid of the ceiling lights here and save on a little bit of power, but especially the heat is going to be much lower. Right now these lamps don't do us a favor and I had to go a little bit creative with the cooling loop there. So now we can take one of these lamps, place them right there and they will still reach the entirety of the farm. You can see placing them at the bottom layer here will be able to reach all the tiles. So this was a really helpful comment, thank you. I'm just now quickly going through my to-do list and things that I have to let you know about. For instance, we changed the schedule the previous time. I had to give them one more slot of sleep time in order for them to be able to make it back to the base from certain spots. So that is another downside, but this planetoid here is the luxury planetoid. We don't need them to do that much work anymore. Most of the duplicants that have something important to do, do it, like Otto who cooks. You also suggested limiting the access for certain duplicants, so we could say only our farm guys should be able to enter and exit. And I believe that would be Bert and Devon. So only those two guys can enter and this is gonna make it much less likely that the items aren't picked up by the auto sweepers. Another process I wanted to get started, because it will probably take a while, is filling up the power spine here with hydrogen instead of the carbon dioxide. And the way we're gonna do this is by opening up these tiles here. Let me make sure I don't destroy anything that's in the background. And this is gonna allow for air to go out. And we force it to go out by pumping in some hydrogen on the top and everything else should be pushed down eventually. We just have to keep the procedure observed. So all we have to do is take our output here, bring it over and maybe we just set up some bridges for these guys. Is this one going up? Yeah, I think that is my steam pipe here and the carbon dioxide pipe. And then we simply go out and I guess we can even release the hydrogen right here because it is going to travel up naturally. And everything on the top, I already made sure the hydrogen cannot escape. So the very top is secure here. Actually, is it? Yeah, there's a drywall and then it can also not escape into the base anymore. And there it is, hydrogen already flowing in. Let's observe it. Yes. This is probably gonna take a while because we have to fill the entirety of the spine with around two kilograms of hydrogen, maybe a little bit less. But as soon as we see some proper distribution, the hydrogen on the top and all the other gases at the bottom, we're also gonna start pumping them out so it goes a little bit quicker. Also on my to-do list since a couple of episodes is the automation for this power switch. I might not always be here and I actually already had to activate it once when I was fiddling around with the water and it didn't provide the water anymore. It just ran out of power and there is an easy fix to prevent this. All we want to do is set up a filter gate, let's say right here. We're gonna go ahead and connect this and it's gonna be connected straight to the power transformer. And what we actually connect it to is the battery, but since this is all the same signal, we can just have it right there. We can then set a delay, because as you can see, the green is only on for a short time, and then it turns off again if everything runs correctly. However, if the green is on for a very long time, we don't get the necessary energy anymore. Now, theoretically, the green can be on for a very long time, provided we use up all the oxygen, so I have to make sure this is going to be a large buffer so it doesn't always activate. Now I cannot quite reach this cable so I have to make my way inside. However, as for the timing, let's say we're gonna do two minutes. If the green doesn't go off for two minutes then probably something is wrong because we cannot charge up the battery. And so now if we do this for all of our oxygen systems, nothing can go wrong anymore. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to do is actually switch to berry sludge. We now ate up Basically everything, I'm not cooking the gristle berries anymore, only barbecue, omelettes and the berry sludge. 
Most of these guys actually ate through the barbecue and we now have these berry sludge pieces, 31 kilograms, not too shabby. But we have almost no other food, so I think I'm just gonna enable berry sludge for everyone until we have better food. I mean, it is the best food we have right now at the same quality as barbecue. So if we offer both, maybe they are gonna alternate or we just have to have the barbecue in the storage bin that is closer to the mess tables. But yeah, very shortly we should be getting some more. 124,000 kilocalories is already a good start, I would say, looking at these farms. Something else you warned me about is the water sieve could overheat with this setup because we have no way of cooling things down. So I replaced a couple of these pipes with radiant pipes. We'll see if that is gonna be enough. Right now it is at 35 degrees and it has been at that for quite a long time. But I have to observe how things are going. Of course we have to think long term and I also don't want it to overheat within a thousand cycles. If we have a quick look at crew deal, we can see we are, well, basically almost done with the planetoid. It is now time to make a better transit tube access system. So I think I'm gonna go out from here. We're gonna make our way down and then I wanna distribute into all directions. And I want it as convenient as possible for my duplicant. Meaning I would like to see a transit tube access point for each of the oil wells. So my duplicant can go there as quickly as possible whenever needed. I guess we might want to elevate them a little bit. The idea is basically we're gonna have the oil dump all the way down so we can pick it up in this large basin. The oil well cannot really overheat but it is still gonna be cooled down by the crude oil it expels. So if we add this guy right here it should dump the crude oil at the bottom. It is not gonna flood the transit tube but it is still gonna flow down. I guess we could even set up some mesh tasks here. No, actually then we would fail to cool down the oil well sufficiently. Anyways, we would then add our transit tube access point nearby and then we're gonna connect it like so and this is just gonna be one huge room. We can even try to integrate the sulfur geyser somehow. And you know, having these many transit tube access points doesn't really matter because my duplicant is only gonna use one of them either way and it's gonna use the same amount of power. But he's gonna be at each individual oil well much quicker which is important so the water inside cannot get too hot thinking about this maybe we want it to fill up even more so let's say we encase this a little bit so it has to fill up the first tile completely before it swaps over we want it to drop down below and we're gonna access it from this side yeah i think i actually like this solution a little bit better seems safer if you ask me okay after some fiddling and fiddling this is what i came up with now we're gonna fill the first tile with oil and then it can flow through these mesh tiles and actually go down. And we still have the transit tube access point nearby. Same thing with the second and third one right here. And this guy I figured we can just access from this transit tube access point. Because I wasn't able to properly connect the transit tubes there. And I figured it is really close enough. So I think with that out of the way just the power needs to be done. And then I'm gonna leave Liam to do the job. Gonna start with the heavy watt charm plate and I think I'm just gonna lead the power wherever we have the transit tubes at this point. And we're also already gonna connect up the oil wells. Maybe one final thing we can already do but make sure it is not quite hooked up yet is the water access to our oil wells. So that is gonna be plenty for Liam to actually already build. But once he's done we can basically get right into the oil business. Start to sort out this place a little bit, get these liquids out of the way, ready to fill it all up with oil. Of course, with some automation as well. Looking at Liam's day-to-day -day life, I'm really sorry for him. I mean, he's allergic to plants and he's like been having an allergic reaction ever since I printed him multiple hundreds of cycles ago. So I think we should really send over some berry sludge for him so he doesn't even have to take care of the cooking anymore. As announced, I also swapped the two storage bins. Now we're keeping the barbecue, for instance, here in the front storage and then the berry sludge here at the back. And I would say we are gonna send some over now. This is already pointing at crew deal. I'm just gonna go ahead, send some over. This should be done immediately by Ellie in this case. And then we are gonna stop it once we send over enough. We have to make sure we don't quite send over everything like that. 20 kilogram packet of berry sludge is more than enough at least to get us started and hopefully <coughs> no we sent everything that wouldn't be very good i think i'm just gonna try to extract the 20 kilograms packet here 
by dismantling it. And now somewhere there should be our berry sludge, though I honestly don't know where. Ah, there we go. It was inside the tile. Jeez, uh, sweep that up immediately, somebody. Oh my gosh. What is even going on? But now we can send this other packet here. And the next one we send over is hopefully going to be a little bit more elegant. There we go. We're going to send over these 16 kilograms. That should be enough for like 32 cycles or so for Liam. And it should also be fairly quick. Just 0.2 cycles. I love these things. This is going to allow us to finally dismantle the bristle blossoms here. Liam is going to be so freaking happy. In this case, by the way, I believe I'm just going to set up a ration box here. I also wanted to get another mess table in the joint in case another duplicate wants to join. So maybe we can revamp this left room to be another bedroom. Looks like I accidentally removed the pipes here as well. No problem, Liam can clean up. And the, the berry sludge also arrived. So I would like to store that in here, like everything else. But we do not need to cook anything anymore. Do we still have something in here? Not enough to cook it, so the electric grill can go. No, wait, I wanted to keep my berry sludge in the ration box. Yeah, we don't need to waste the power for the fridge even. Berry sludge is just the best. Yeah, allergic reaction is like crazy. He is sneezing every two seconds or so, but this is gonna be his very last. Yeah, look at this, just got cured. And then he can breathe freely for the rest of his life. Something else we have to consider are the farm station. They are gonna require materials, I believe fertilizer mainly, to produce the micronutrient fertilizers. This is gonna make the plants grow much faster, I believe up to 100% the speed, so double the speed. And then if we wanted to take this to the extreme, we could even have some grub crops in here, but I think that might be a problem in terms of regulating the temperature. So I'm not even sure I want that additional 50% boost. How are we gonna make fertilizer? Is there a specific machine? Yeah, the fertilizer synthesizer. It requires polluted water, dirt, phosphoride and power. This is a tall order. It will produce some natural gas and fertilizer. This sounds like a pretty annoying machine. There are no gas outputs, so that means the natural gas is just gonna go anywhere. And then we also need the polluted water. Considering right now I'm actually losing polluted water actively, we might not want to do that. What we could do, however, hmm... Why not use that as an opportunity to get rid of the carbon dioxide? Like what we have more than enough of is just plain water. And one of the reasons for that is of course because we are processing the polluted water. But what if we pumped in some carbon dioxide into a room, then we used a carbon skimmer to pollute normal water, then we used that in order to feed the synthesizer. In turn, we're gonna be getting back some natural gas, which we could combine with this machine. We could then use the natural gas to produce some power in the generators, which then will produce some more polluted water, which should have priority over polluting our own fresh water. But it would still be a way over 100 or 200 cycles to kind of get rid of the carbon dioxide, as long as we can provide it. It is up to 150 degrees in here. I wonder, is there an overheat temperature? Yeah, it's 75 degrees, but I would still be interested to kind of integrate it in this room. So I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna make this room here much larger. And I'm gonna... Actually, we don't even need to do that because it's already carbon dioxide. Ah, this is perfect. So we could even open this up and already build it without having to worry about the gases. Well, there's some polluted oxygen in there anyways. So maybe let's brainstorm the idea. If we had some airflow tiles here and on top of that a synthesizer. Actually, we can already add that here. Yeah, this is probably enough space. We built the synthesizer out of steel, so it cannot overheat inside of this room. We would then complete the room like so. And then here at the bottom, we need a setup for our carbon skimmer, which we're probably gonna have at the very end to ensure this is always gonna be carbon dioxide. Well, it doesn't even matter because the carbon skimmer is only gonna start working once it is submerged in carbon dioxide. But we still have to build it out of steel, so it's gonna go right here in this corner. We will then be feeding it normal water here, and it's gonna output the polluted water on the top, feeding it directly into the synthesizer. 
we then still use this gas pump here to pump out the natural gas and if everything goes right then the carbon dioxide should never go here. We just have to make sure we use the Atmos sensors correctly. One potential problem I see is the overheating of the liquid inside of this pipe. So maybe one thing we could do is instead lead this above and over. So there are only really a few pipes exposed. And then we just have to make sure to add enough automation to make it fail safe. But for now, let's just go ahead and build this. I'm gonna need to give myself a certain access points and that should then turn out nicely. Actually, I'm lying. We need to be able to access the fertilizer because we need to work with it. That means it is time for another transit tube now we will have to make sure that we don't exceed the 150 degrees, otherwise the plastic is just gonna melt. And I also would like to prevent much of the heat from escaping. Mm, I think we might just try to kind of cushion this in at our transit tube access point there. And then a bunch of ladders to also go downstairs. So we can access everything inside of this room and we will open this up as well. And wait a second, do I want to integrate the natural gas generators inside of this room? I mean, wow, that would be easily doable. Like all we have to do is maybe make this room a little bit larger. So we're gonna go down one block and then we can add a bunch of these at the bottom. Now, should we also make them out of steel probably? That is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt since they cost 800 kilograms. But we could add three of them, which might be perfect. And I kind of want to do it. How are the temperatures? Nice. Okay, we're ready for some steel action here. I'm gonna need 16 more crafts at this point. Okay, I rearranged a couple of things so I can have a smart battery inside of here as well as a liquid pump. I was thinking that I'm gonna feed this into the main system, but I do not want any large power cables here. So I figured we could maybe use the natural gas to power all of these elements and if we have some extra power then we can feed it to other systems to supply them. But the main thing is now we have access, we could open this up and then maybe I want to regulate just when the carbon skimmer is going to do its thing. I also added a bunch of pipes for the carbon dioxide so we can lead this out right here. All we have to do is maybe add a high gas pressure vent right there. One last thing we have to do is bring the water down. We're gonna need some water probably in the future here anyway, so this is where it's gonna be coming from instead of the left side. I also made sure the liquid pump actually gets priority with this bridge here, so we are only gonna use the carbon skimmer if we cannot provide enough polluted water with the generators themselves. The battery is already hooked up to the generators and it's set to 95 and 60 at the moment. I'm gonna get the Atmos sensor here situated as well and it's gonna focus on the carbon skimmer. With these changes I believe it's time to get this machine into motion. So I'm gonna open this up and then I'm gonna make sure they rebuild the cabling here and we can activate the gas pump again. Yeah there, the natural gas guys here is already going for it. Now I just have to hope. Uh, it's 150 degrees so it's never gonna be above 150 degrees which is actually what the transit tubes can take. But we still have to see how it goes. There's also going to be some additional cooling provided to, with the natural gas generator's polluted water. But I guess now it's time to reconnect these so the generators can start working. And then maybe we can already disconnect the power and see how it actually works. Just on its own. And we can already see the gases are distributing well. I just want to make sure maybe we don't do this at 500 grams but we want to wait for at least 2000 grams. There's already some carbon dioxide in here. I hope this isn't gonna happen a lot. This might have happened because of the beginning. Right now it does look pretty good. Maybe I'm gonna make this another insulated tile and these guys can be airflow tiles as well. And now the natural gas generators are working. So they release some polluted water and looks like they have to turn on quite frequently. So whenever the natural gas guys here is dormant, this is where we might run into problems and we'll have to make use of another power system. But I want to make sure we utilize as much of the natural gas in order to power what we have here. So it's not taxing on our main system. And there is the pump doing its thing at the moment. It is a little bit wasteful by not waiting long enough. 
but there is our synthesizer already working. It has been filled up by the duplicants, but I would like to provide the dirt and the phosphorite here, just as we are used to. I'm gonna do this off camera, just add another phosphorite line. As for the dirt, we can simply take it from this line. So my suggestion would be to go straight down here, straight over into this guy, and then we add a third line with the phosphorite that will go in here, and then we'll have everything provided. So we kind of want to see what's going on in terms of temperatures, but I believe we might just be fine. And then we have the fertilizer that we still need to put into a storage bin. Actually, it's going to be a conveyor loader right there, probably. Or could we have it? No, let's add it there. We could have our fertilizer just go into another conveyor receptacle. So instead of the storage bin, we'll have some conveyor receptacles. Ah, that would have been nice with some automation. I could have an auto sweeper here, but I think the duplicants need to use the farm station. So there's no complete automation there anyways. So instead, I'm gonna bring this up here into a conveyor receptacle. We add another auto sweeper there. And instead of this storage bin, we're gonna have a smart storage bin. The smart storage bin has a automation output. So when it is full, it is gonna send a green signal. We want this to be a red signal instead. So there you have a NOT gate and we bring the automation all the way over in order to disable the synthesizer. This way we'll have a full conveyor receptacle plus a full smart storage bin with enough fertilizer to provide for all the farm stations that we're gonna have here. As for this Atmo sensor here, I want this also to be above 2000 grams before the carbon skimmer starts working. So we will have as few puddles of gassing as possible. I would like to prevent polluted oxygen from accumulating, so we have to have this under control. As mentioned, I'm gonna add a timer sensor here for my pump. It is going a little bit crazy and it's not worth it just turning on every time it detects liquid. I'm gonna maybe turn it on for a couple of seconds every minute or so. Okay, looks like we are providing more than enough polluted water this way. How about the natural gas? It's also all completely full. Okay, looks like everything settled down a little bit. However, the excess materials are going to be a problem. For instance, we waste all that natural gas right now that we could use to provide power to the base. Also, this way the pressure is gonna accumulate more than I would like to see. You know, I guess we just have to observe it for a while and I'm gonna figure out a solution for uh, the natural gas. Also, we might want to make sure we first filter out the carbon dioxide should it end up in these pipes. I think I'm gonna do that over here. We're just gonna have our usual solution. So I'm gonna take a little detour first. And the usual solution is a pressure vent with, let's see, a sensor. Gas pipe element sensor right there. Bit of cabling into a knot gate and we're all done. Now we have the sensor in place and only natural gas is gonna make it through. Wonderful. Still, I think at the beginning of the next episode, I would like to find a solution for the excess gases and potentially the excess water that is going to accumulate. But we'll have to see how that is really doing. And then if everything runs well, we can also pump the carbon dioxide from outside into the contraption and make sure we have always something to skim. But yeah, with that out of the way, I would say we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye bye.